Good evening. Welcome to the 2019 primary election candidates forum for Wyandotte County. I am Laura Bland of Business West. Business West and Kansas City, Kansas Community College are the sponsors of this forum. Let me introduce the panelists who will ask questions of candidates. They are Mary Rupert, the editor of the Wyandotte Daily Online, and J.D. Reels, a retired administrator with the Kansas City, Kansas School District, and a former trustee of the community college. Candidates will have one and one half minutes for opening remarks, and the panelists will ask questions of the candidates. Candidates will have two minutes to respond. Panelists will have the right to ask follow-up questions. Candidates will then have one minute for closing remarks. Please understand this is not a debate. Candidates are urged to focus on the issue. The forum is being taped for playback on the college's public access channel. Our first group of candidates are seeking the at large third district seat for the Board of Public Utilities. Let me introduce the candidates. They are David Haley, Rose Henry, Faith Rivera, and Norm Scott the incumbent. Now we'll turn to the panelists and we'll start out with Mary Rupert to ask the first question. Thank you. Um, as everyone knows, there is a heat wave today in KCK. This question is about the environment and how it affects KCK customers. With the extremes in temperatures that KCK experiences in the winter and summer, and sometimes it's life-threatening, do you think it's time to do away with cutoffs for residents who can't pay their bills? Some residents have said this year that their utilities were cut off in early spring when the temperature rose slightly above one point, and then the temperature returned to freezing later on, endangering children. Should another system be developed where the power is not cut off at all? but a fund from community donors automatically kicks in to keep the lights on. What is your opinion? And we'll start with David Haley. David? Thank you, Mr. Bland, and thank you for the question. Thank you for hosting the forum this evening. I thought we were going to have a brief introductory statement. Um, I'm, uh, at some point in time, I certainly want to close at that point. I'm glad we're having this forum. I'm glad we're discussing um, issues like a cold and a hot weather rule and how they disaffect our BPU currently. So the policies that we have in place, whether when we shut off or shut on or whether or not a security deposit is put in place and how that relates to income, I believe and my campaign is committed to a top to bottom review where we are able to compare, if you will, policies on an apples to apples comparison with other utilities in the state. I've been a longtime advocate and have supported in the state uh, looking at the Kansas Corporation Commission. And I urge you and everyone here and those who are following us to look at the KCC. The Kansas Corporation Commission develops and answers questions like you propound now, Ms. Rupert, um, is this the right way to go? What would happen if we were Westar or KCPNL with this particular policy? So I want to make sure that the people of Wyandotte County, those of us who are with this monopoly utility, the Board of Public Utilities, are not disadvantaged or overly advantaged even um, in terms of the policies that are instituted. And I think that's a fair enough way to look at those apples to apples comparisons and looking at how the KCC administers. I apologize, I didn't allow opening remarks, so David, what, will you present your opening remarks now? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best, <laughs> I'll do my best. Um, it's probably a little bit disadvantageous to hear me go on for another two minutes, um, but <laughs> No, I, I'm pleased to be here this evening, and I, I thank each of you for being here. I thank 
the sponsors for putting this together. We don't get together enough to talk about uh, in, in season and out the issues that are affecting or disaffecting this jewel that calls our BPU. My name is David Haley. I've been involved um, politically, um, socially in this, my native county, for decades. And during that course of time, I've listened closely to the concerns that make us um, not on par with others. And I've heard time and again and have supported time and again having a dialogue with what I consider to be the jewel of our municipality. Owning our own electric and water plant is a rare and very um, prestigious place to be. But when the ratepayers and the consumers feel as if we're disadvantaged, know that we're being set up on by a syndicate that is too often non-responsive, we have to do something. So my campaign, the reason I'm running, people say, why did you leave the cozy zone of my work in Topeka? It's because we really do need to have this dialogue. We really do need to have someone who says as a candidate that they intend to look into issues that are raised through the BPU, but then actually do it once they're elected instead of forgetting what happened as soon as they did. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rivera. You're your remarks. Okay. Well, hi, I'm Faith Rivera. I'm a second generation uh, Wyandotte County resident. I am a single mother who was raised by a single mother. So I know what it is like to struggle, just as many of us Wyandotte County residents do. Um, I've, I've worked three jobs and went to school. Matter of fact, I went to school, Kansas City, Kansas Community College here and became a certified electrician. I am a weatherization tech. I am um, lead certified. I'm OSHA certified. I've worked in the construction field. I love uh, renewable energy. That is something that I see in our future. Um, again, I've, I know what it's like to struggle, and I have been going to BPU uh, board meetings, and I see the treatment and the this customer service that we get from our BPU service. And this is something that we own. Um, so I am here running for the people that are looking for a change, for their bills to go down, not worrying about uh, where that next, how you're gonna make that BPU payment. The pilot tax is, is, is atrocious. Um, just things that we here in our community need to know more about our policies. They have policies that we go to at the BPU board that they vote on that we don't even get to see. So I would like to let you know that I am, my name is Faith Rivera. I ask that you, uh, Faith Rivera, and I ask for you to vote for me on August 6th. Thank you. Melissa? Melissa Bray. Yes. Hello, excuse my tardiness. I'm Melissa Arpeza Vale. And I am a fourth generation Wyandotte County um, resident. I was born and raised in between Armadale and Argentine. Um, also went to Kansas Kansas Community College, um, KU School of Nursing, as well as um, I am currently, my trade is a nurse practitioner and I work in Wyandotte County as well. Um, I'm finishing up my doctoral degree as of May of next year. Um, so <laughs> the reason I am running is because, again, I agree with Faith. <laughs> a lot of people are very upset about their bills, um, don't have questions. There's not a lot of transparency or accountability um, going forward. The website is not easy to use, as well as they have open meetings, um, but you cannot find an agenda or minutes to follow up on those types of things. Um, Again, with the website, we're just not able to find. It's not user-friendly. I was at another um, neighborhood association meeting last night. A lot of people don't have computers or don't use technology here in Wyandotte County. What about those people? Have we thought about those people who would like just to have an update of what they're doing, how their rates are doing, tidbits on how can I save energy? If I run my dishwasher at 9 o'clock at night, is it cheaper for me? Those types of things. Just new ideas, innovation, looking towards the future, sustainability. Um, there are several issues um, last night um, that came up as well. You know, We have 800 retirees, but we don't have the pension, um, 800 people have retired from BPU, but we don't have those type of people to reinvest into that. Again, Melissa or pays a bill running for BPU at large. Norm Scott. Hey, my name is Norm Scott. I'm uh, born and bred, raised here, 
I don't know the last time any of my relatives lived anywhere else. Um, I will say this, our, our board meetings are open. Our minutes are available. Uh, they are uh, produced in uh, verbatim. Um, all you have to do is pick one up. They are, uh, we have a BPU.com site. If anybody's on the computer, they can get that. Uh, as far as our uh, hot and cold weather uh, policies, they are produced and uh, uh, available to anybody that wants to come down. Uh, if you don't have them, they're probably produced in the, uh, the uh, BPU connection. Uh, this comes out quite often, comes out to all the users. There's a lot of good information in there, uh, very explanatory information. Uh, I hear a lot about the pilot tax. Uh, that happens to be the UGs. It doesn't have anything to do with us. It's a pass-through that uh, it shows up on our bill, so is the trash service, so is the storm sewer service, and uh, all of that. But it's, uh, it's all goes to UG. We don't keep any of that. I, uh, I have been there for one term. Okay, I'm sorry, my time's up. Okay. Rose Henry. Hi, I'm Rose Mulvaney Henry. Um, I am, I, I have lived in Wyandotte County almost my entire life. The only time I left was when I went to KU for my undergraduate and went to Washburn Law School. I am an attorney. Um, I am an attorney that has practiced in the utility industry for 25 years. And um, I had somebody ask me last week, they said, have you lost your mind? And this was a local politician that asked me that. And I said, I may have, but somewhere along the way, you lost your mind too because you thought you could come in and make a difference. And I'm trying to stay in my lane. Um, not a lot of people do exactly what it is I do in the legal profession. A lot of people will call you up and say, hey, can you uh, give me some advice on my divorce? I'm like, no. <laughs> Nobody ever calls you up and says, hey, can you give me some advice on my utility contracts or anything like that? Nobody ever says that. Um, but that's what I do. And so I had an opportunity to work closely um, with the BPU last year as an outside contractor for the unified government. And I thought to myself, you know, I might actually be able to make a difference. So I may have lost my mind. Um, but I'm, I'm in this to hopefully provide some leadership, hopefully provide some experience, hopefully bring some, some background and some problem solving. These problems have been around this utility my entire life. I can remember my parents talking about them here. Um, vote Rose Mulvaney Henry on August 6th. My time's up, sorry. Next we'll turn to J.D. Rios. She will start the questions. I'm sorry. They didn't all get to answer her question. I did a good enough job, don't you think? <laughs> 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 I think it's going to work. Thank you. Did I miss a question? Would you repeat the question? Okay. Because just like. I'm sorry. You just, yeah. Now, as everyone knows, there is a heat wave today in KCK. This question is about the environment and how it affects KCK customers. With the extremes in temperatures that KCK experiences in the winter and summer, including some temperatures that are life-threatening, do you think it is time to do away with cutoffs altogether for residents who can't pay their bills? Some residents have said their utilities were cut off in early spring when the temperature rose slightly above freezing at one point and then the temperature returned to freezing later on, endangering some children. Should another system be developed where the power is not cut off at all, but a fund from community donors automatically kicks in to keep the lights on? What is your opinion? Yes, so my opinion on um, the uh, weather uh, temperature uh, policy is um, that we need to, just like as David said, we need to investigate that. Uh, previous, pre, uh, just recently, uh, BPU has uh, reviewed the policy and um, went through the information. And we, I was at that board meeting when they when they uh, 
voted for that policy. Uh, I would like to say that it was not in the minutes. I have the minutes here. It was not a policy that we were able to view. So I would like to say that with this being said, I think that we need to come up with a policy that best suits the community. Let get the input from the from our customers. When we do that, if we if this is a policy that we want to look at, it should be in the minutes and let us look at it and talk about it at the meeting. Unfortunately, that was not something that was done at that time, and so we didn't have a say in it. Um, I do believe that we need to, um, in, you know, investigate further, uh, look into it. What is good for the whole community, and that's all of us. Thank you, Melissa. So my thoughts on the um, weather policies is what I found very interesting. I was at the same meeting that Faith was. It had been 25 years since that had been evaluated. I found that really amazing that this isn't done either every two years or every three years, but it was something that was 25 years in the making. And it wasn't even brought up into somebody's intention until a person came and said they had their, their power cut off during when it was cold. I absolutely agree with the fact that we should definitely be as a community help each other and if there is a fund, a fund that is developed that people have extra money and are willing to donate for those of us who have hard times and actually pay it forward, um, I think that's a great idea. I think that's wonderful. We all live together in this community as well in Wyandotte County. I love my neighbors in Wyandotte County. I lived for a very brief time in Johnson County and I can tell you why it was so brief. Um, they just don't understand community like they do here at Wyandotte County. Um, our, my neighbors are wonderful. They check on us um, any other time. I had a, my grass got a little high, I was turned in in Johnson County. It was not, it's not a very friendly area that I was in at least. Um, but definitely um, looking forward to the sustainability and finding a fund, I think that's a wonderful idea, especially if we could pay it forward to the people here in the county and help those who are going through a tough time or just less fortunate or making their social security stretch from one month to the next, but still obviously can't be in this type of heat and weather. Thank you. I want to focus on the uh, shutting the uh, utilities off. They're because of no, non-payment. Uh, yes, we do shut uh, utilities off because of non-payment, but it has nothing to do with the weather. The weather is uh, a consideration that we look at all the time. It's always uh, a concern when, when anybody, um, uh, no matter whether they pay the bill or not, uh, doesn't have air conditioning when it's 100 degrees or, or uh, heat when it's uh, uh, 20 below. That's always a concern, and we, and we do Personally, uh, that's always my number one concern is what the public thinks and, and what the public needs. Uh, it's, it's not about me, it's about what they need. We have policies in place for that and uh, they're available. They're always available. Uh, if, if, um, if you come, we will provide that sheet of paper uh, to tell you what those are. Now. Um, if there are issues uh, that people don't agree with or don't understand, we do have an ex ethics commission that's quite available and uh, they will get after us if you holler at them and call them. Um, in fact, they're looking for people to be on that ethics commission now. So uh, that's, uh, that's where I'm at with this. You, People don't want to pay their bills. And also, when you come into that office down there in the lobby, there are people there who will help you pay the bills. Uh, you can pay as you go, uh, uh, those kind of things. And so it's, uh, there's, there's several programs available to help you pay the bills. What is your response? Um, thanks for the question, Mary. It, it's an important one. I think everybody has, has provided some valuable input on it. Um, I, I think you've got to look at our community, right? Melissa touched on that. This is a community. It's very different than a lot of other communities many of us have experienced. You know, just visiting, um, have neighbors, friends that live in other communities. There is nothing like Wyandotte County, Kansas. There just isn't. Um, and to that point, you know, USA Today did an article recently at the end of June 
um, talking about worst counties to live in every state. Wyandotte County was listed for Kansas. And part of that has to do with almost a quarter of our neighbors live at or below the poverty level. That's a problem. You've got people who have a hard time paying their bills sometimes. You've got people who live on fixed incomes, hard time paying their bills sometimes. If we don't have policies that address our community, I'm not sure what good the policies are. Um, I personally believe that if somebody has to go down to the VP to try to find a policy, that's a little bit problematic. Um, probably infuse a little bit more transparency there. And to the extent that a community fund was developed for folks that can't pay their bills and need a little extra help, I think that's great. And actually, I think it probably embodies all of Wyandotte County. Okay, now we'll turn to J.D. Rios, who has a question, and we'll start with Norm Sanders. J.D.? Thank you. Why is it important to have a public utility versus a private utility for Wyandotte County? So, J.D., thanks for the question. As opposed, a private meaning, I mean, a, a, a municipally owned utility versus something that's highly regulated? Yes. Uh, because when you say private, that makes me think that it's literally privately owned. And I think we know that KCPNL and, and Westar, Evergy, whatever it's called now, um, right? I, I, think, I think it's important because it is, David has referred to this as a jewel. And it can be an extremely beneficial asset to your community if you have a municipally owned utility. Folks have suggested that this utility be subjected to regulation by the Kansas Corporation Commission. I work there, just FYI. I've sat on the other side of the table. Um, I, I would trust our community to make decisions for our utility more than I would trust an outside entity like the Kansas Corporation Commission. And I have very good friends that work there. I'm not sure that they do what's best for every community. And our community is different. I just told you about the poverty level, the percentage of folks who live in poverty in our community. We have to have a utility that works for us. I think it's important for us to be able to try and offer our own power and water to our community. We've done it for a really long time. I'm not going to say we've done it well all the time. I think we have an opportunity right now with new leadership to actually make this sustainable into the future. Uh, the difference between uh, municipalities and uh, KCPNL is we they are investor owned. Uh, there's a profit that they are going to pay to their uh, shareholders. Uh, where we are a nonprofit, and we any money any extra money we have we put back in the community. We're very community oriented. Um, the uh, um, the rates are, are very comparable. Uh, we have the best water in the world. We have the most dependable electric in the world. Uh, reliability does mean a whole lot. It's, uh, it's part of our uh, motto. Um, when you flip the switch, you want something to happen. And we work diligently in that direction. Uh, same way with the water. We want the water to be as good as it can be and uh, available to you anytime you turn the faucet on. I will say this, that that little thermostat that sits on a wall belongs to you. When you are having trouble with your bills, you might want to look at that and see if it's turned up too high or too low. That can make a whole lot of difference. Uh, and we don't always have to sit in a um, 65 degree weather like on a day like today. So uh, a lot of it, we, we always point the finger at somebody else, but when we do, there's always three more looking back at you. So we each have a responsibility to make sure that we take care of our, our business. Uh, there's a lot of landlords in this business too that are renting out places that the curtains are flopping around every time the wind blows. That can't be good. We need some, we need some issues there uh, to, to straighten up that stuff. Thank you. Melissa? 
Yes, so a municipality versus a private. Um, as you can tell today, just having this opportunity to pick your board, I think is a wonderful opportunity with having a municipality um, with the electricity and the water. You get a voice. You get to say it's time to change. It's time to do things different. We want things different. And your voices can be heard. I think that's a great opportunity with having what we have here at BPU um, compared to the privately owned, investor owned um, electricity and waters that are elsewhere. So for us, I think it's a wonderful opportunity and it really does reflect the community values that we have here in Wyandotte County. Thank you. Right. Yes. Um, so just as everybody else has explained is that what's great about having it owned by the people in the community is that we have a voice and it, uh, we can say uh, what we like and what we don't like. And we get to vote on who, case in point, we're up here, we're voting, we're getting ready to say who is and who, who should run or, or be a part of the BPU board. We need to trust the community. Uh, the community needs, the BPU needs to be community driven. Uh, unfortunately, currently, we are not able to have a voice. Uh, we are um, shushed. We are uh, misled, misgiven information. Um, which is uh, something why I'm running for BPU uh, at large. Uh, as a weatherization tech, that me, uh, I'm able to help with bills uh, to tighten up your house. Uh, weatherization means like a blower door testing. We need to get some of these things that KCPNL have, just like the uh, weatherization um, uh, funding information that they have um, to weatherization, weatherize our houses, more insulation. We need to look into that. Look into programs that would, you know, help us maybe get better windows, things like that. Um, so hopefully, with me, uh, with weatherization in the community, um, it being community driven, we'll be able to make changes such as these. Thank you. Can I ask uh, JD Rios? If you could please repeat the question, it's from my point. Would you mind, please, sir? Oh. Why is it important to have a, what I call, public utility, a community owned, uh, versus a private utility or investor? Thank you. And I, I think everyone has spoken very clearly to why it's important to have a public utility versus a private one. As has, has been said, I do believe that our public utility is a jewel. It's a tremendous opportunity to be head and shoulders above other areas that have to buy their power and um, their water from some other source. As the rate payers, though, that own this utility, ostensibly, we are the shareholders. And when the shareholders are not getting a return on the investment, when the rates are disproportionately high, uh, rather from kilowatt or from per square foot of water, there should be a concern that we look at making it a more livable, publicly owned utility. My campaign is centered around um, putting the public back in the Board of Public Utilities because those people that are making decisions right now, and we understand this every election cycle, you know what I mean, we hear from candidates who understand that we need to make our publicly owned utility more directly responsive to being a livable component of life in Wyandotte County. And it's out of whack, it's out of sync. It didn't just happen in 2019, it's been going on for decades. So why doesn't it change? For those who come to us and say, um, we should sell the BPU, I say no. I say we should get a majority on the board of public utilities that understands the public's needs in Wyandotte County and scales it, makes it work. So at the end of the year, the ratepayers, the shareholders, if you will, don't just see what's left over go to various community causes, but in fact sees a better quality of life because we're not paying an onerous bill. We're getting non-responses, as often happens from our customer service. Okay. Thank you. The next question will come from Mary Rupert. Thank you. Um, some of you have already touched on this, but here it is again. 
Um, some residents have told a legislative committee that they were not happy with the level of customer service and they wanted to bring the BP under the Kansas Corporation Commission to answer their questions. Should the BPU be placed under the Kansas Corporation Commission? And if your answer is yes, to what extent should the KCC have authority over the BPU, if any? We'll start with, with Dave. Thank you for that question. So as a state legislator, I have pushed uh, for many years to have the Kansas Corporation Commission be able to respond, including a bill this year that I introduced um, to get a hearing on, not so we would be quote unquote under the um, KCC, but that we could find out how we rank with queries that the rest of the state can ask of the KCC. Right now, if you log on to their website, Kansas Corporation Commission, and you want to have an opinion or a complaint, how can we judge if the policies that we have or how we're being treated or mistreated? And so I want us to not be under the KCC, but I want us to be able to access the KCC, that the KCC won't turn um, around and say we can't respond to that because you're supposedly having someone who you elect to your municipal utility who should respond when we know in fact that they don't. We know in fact that we don't have uh, that comparison. So 12 years ago, my colleague then, Chris Steiniger, treasurer of my campaign now, the Senator Steiniger and I and others saw unanimously um, the, um, the Board of Public Utilities uh, would go to the KCC in the Senate. It went over to the House and special interests here that um, went to um, and got the House to turn it around. We're going to get there. I'm going to continue to push that um, as a board member. I'm going to continue to push for that as a legislator um, because I want us to have the same rights and opportunities to have review of what policies are occurring um, as every other Kansan who has a, an electric or a water usage. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> I believe we should work together with the KCC. Um, and uh, I'm, I don't know a lot about it, and uh, I would like to learn more. But I do think that there's a, a way for us to definitely work together, as, as David said, get the policies and, and figure out what maybe incorporate some information from them. Uh, I still think that we definitely still need to be uh, community driven and within their community because uh, we need to have a voice here. Uh, we are, we have a lot of people that like we, we've been talking about that are, you know, just fighting to make our ends meet, to make sure that they, they're paying their bills. And, and it's not that they don't want to pay their bills, it's that they can't pay their bills. And that's the hardship that we have here in Wyandotte County. We're, we're trying. We're trying, we're trying. Um, but if the rates keep going up and, um, and uh, we have policies that hinder us, we're just gonna be under the water again, and we can't. That's my thoughts. Okay, Melissa. Here go. Going forward with the KCCC, um, once you open that door, it's not one you're going to be able to close easily or um, separate yourself with from. So changing this to something I think is more of a partnership compared to um, overtaking um, would definitely be in the best interest of the community because once it's gone, it's gonna absolutely be gone. So it's something we definitely have to give great thought into and consequences long-term um, for what it would mean for the community, Wyandotte County, as well as the Board of Public Utilities, and for the citizens that we have here in Wyandotte County. Mm -hmm. um, we are, no, I don't want the KCC. Uh, we are responsive to the public. Uh, that's why we are elected. When uh, um, our term comes around, we can uh, either be reelected or not, depending on what we did. Our uh, voices are available through the uh, uh, reports every meeting. Um, we, we, are, we are doing very fine. I, I, I will say this, water hasn't had a raise in seven years. No rate increases. Electric won't have any raises for the next two. 
we are we are we were mandated by the EPA to upgrade our Nearman coal plant. That put a lot of money into the pot that we're paying off. Wasn't something we wanted to do, but it was mandated, and here we are. The Board of Public Utilities, I will tell you, is very well, um, our money people are very good. They watch closely. And, and, the, oh, and the board is, is an oversight committee. We need to say that as well. We watch those people. We listen to their reports. We scour over the reports. Um, it, it's not one day a month. It's not two days a month. There's a lot of uh, um, watching and looking. And, and personally, I, I ask the hard questions. Uh, and most of the time I get some good answers. It's, uh, it's not a, uh, um, you know, sit there and nod your head. We do, we do take interest in this. Rose? Yeah, so I, I think I already answered the question, and, and I would not be in favor of putting the BPU under the KCC's jurisdiction. Um, and talking about the partnership, um, I like the suggestion but I don't, I don't see how that works. Um, there is a, use, a citizen's utility ratepayer board uh, that is a, it, it's, it's a group um, within the agency that is supposed to look out for the consumer. And I could see a partnership more with CURB than I could with the KCC, um, just based on the problems I think that we're talking about. But you get into a situation where you become a highly regulated company like that, and it's going to increase your cost. I can tell you that because I know because ultimately the rate payers pay that for KCPNL, Westar, Evergy, whatever they are now, for, for any, any company that is under the KCC's jurisdiction. And I know because I represent many companies that are under the KCC's jurisdiction. Um, so I would not be in favor of it. But as far as, you know, looking at data from consumer complaints and things like that, um, I, I think people are under the impression that the KCC maybe handles that, those types of inquiries better than, for example, we could. I'm not sure that's the case. Um, and again, I've sat on the other side of the table, so I have some experience there. But to try to work toward becoming, you know, world-class customer service, that is absolutely something we as a community should want and that we as a community should absolutely demand, right? And I think that I have only sat through a very few BP board meetings. Um, so my experience with those board meetings is not robust. However, I have noticed that I feel like the board at times lacks compassion. So I think going with the community theme, putting a little bit of that back in, probably isn't going to hurt anybody. We will turn to J.D. Rios for his question. What is a reasonable percentage goal for renewable energy to the portfolio of BPU's energy supply in the next four years? What is your stance on small-scale household-based solar or wind power generation? Okay. We'll start with Rose Henry. Um, and Mr. Brand, I don't mean to correct you, but my legal name is actually Mulvaney. Okay. Um, so, um, and, and no disrespect to my husband who is in the audience tonight. Um, but I, professionally, I do go by Rose Mulvaney Henry, so just FYI. Um, I, I think that we, we look at, I believe, where BPU is today, it's at 40 some odd percent renewables. Is that, I think that number is correct. Um, I believe that that exceeds what the state requires today. And I think we've talked about some of these themes today. And I think part of the question is, is can our community afford that? And I honestly don't know the answer to it, but when 21.4% of our population is living at or below the poverty level, my guess is we cannot. Renewable energy is not inexpensive. Do I think it is a wonderful aspirational goal for us? I do. Do I think we're there today? I, I think we exceed what is required today. 
And I think that if you have customer segments that are interested in going with solar or you know some alternative renewable energy, I think that's a wonderful thing. But I think that you may want to productize that. I think customers who are willing to pay for that type of energy, for whatever reasons it meets their company green goals or whatever it is, I think that's great. Then let's charge them for it. I don't know that every single resident in our community can afford that. So. Uh, when I went to uh, first ran, ran I was uh, they was the BPU was at 22 percent. They're now 45 percent plus. Uh, I do believe in renewable energy uh, because I I thoroughly believe that we've got a uh, a world that's uh, um, needs our attention. That uh, we need uh, more and more uh, uh, green energy. Uh, we're we're running in a in the wrong direction, I think, as far as uh, uh, contamination in our air. We do have a, a diverse portfolio. We have wind, we have solar, we have hydro, uh, we have methane gas. Um, we have a solar farm down at the Nearman plant. Um, anybody wants to get uh, solar, why we have it down there. It's uh, available to you. You can buy panels. Uh, you can. Um, you don't have to do anything to, to uh, uh, reinforce your roof, to put roofs up there, or uh, rooftops and all that. We have it. We'll take care of it for you. Uh, if you move or whatever, you can sell it back to us. We'll buy it back, and uh, it's available. I would encourage, I always encourage uh, renewable energy. It's, uh, it's a wave of the future. Coal plants, no matter what uh, some people say, they're on the way out. But we do have a coal plant that's very good. We put a, uh, a big upgrade in it, and uh, it's very responsive, but it's a coal plant. So renewables, as far as I'm concerned, is the way of the future. So I'd like to agree with Rose as well. Um, definitely, um, I think 49% is, is what, 45 plus is what BPU is at now, but obviously we would definitely strive for the future, for sustainability, for the children, obviously next generations looking forward. Right now BPU does awful, uh, uh, offer um, solar panels. They're $470 to buy one panel. We are having people who can't afford their bills paying from month to month. I think it's a great idea, don't get me wrong. I think it's a wonderful, I recycle, I do that myself. I would love to buy one. Um, but you have to actually live in Wyandotte County for 10 years in order to get anything back, long term, looking at the money. And this is from what I could gather from the website. The website is a little, not very plain <laughs> when it's kind of speaking to you to try to sell you these panels. But like I said, it's one of those that it's a wonderful idea. I think it's great that we have that opportunity. It's not a, a cost effective idea. It's, uh, it's not something that we can actually do around with being a lower population or lower income population. I think there are people who would love to do it, but obviously wouldn't be able to afford it. And definitely with renewable energy, it's definitely the wave of the future. It's something we have to start looking forward to, looking towards the future for everybody, not just Wyandotte County, but for the future of the planet as well. Please. Oh, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> I would like to say as a weatherization tech and a green, um, I went to school here at Kansas City, Kansas Community College. And you know what we did in one of our projects is we made a solar panel here out of an old window frame and some PVC piping. So when people say that, that it's, not, it's not affordable, I mean, I can tell you that you can go online and make this. Uh, Harbor Freight has uh, affordable um, solar panels. Um, so for, for us to pay $425 for a solar panel is just outrageous to me. Um, I do believe that um, green, uh, going green is our future. We have a new uh, plant uh, 
uh, it's over there at Foster Park over in Rosedale. It, it's actually becoming, it's not a solar farm. Why did we not think about investing a solar farm there where KU Medical Center is um, going to use this energy? Um, why, didn't we, why didn't we do something like that? I wasn't in the board meeting for this one, uh, but I do think that there are some questions that we need to ask uh, the BPU and, 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 and get some clarity on for our community because there is opportunity there. 47% is, is great, but we need to be at, a, at, at least 90. In 20 years, our energy, it, it's, it, they're, they're saying in 20 years we're not going to be able to, um, our, our systems are not going to be able to be used because we're going to be outdated. So that's my information on that. So thank you. David? I'm sorry, could I ask you to please repeat the question uh, <laughs> one more time, JD? What is a reasonable percentage goal for renewable energy to the portfolio of BPU's energy supply in the next four years? What is your stance on small scale household based solar or wind power generation? Thank you. Um, so, the last question first. Um, where it is affordable for the smaller homes to have renewable energy, certainly we do want to look at the capacity for um, renewables, wind, solar, um, whatever we can offer to offset what those costs might be, where it's cost efficient. Of course, equipment is always going to come into play um, for those uh, smaller units. Um, is 45 percent where we want to be as a community with, um, with our municipal utility? That's a question I cannot answer. I would want to see us continue on that path. I mean, everywhere we look, we understand that we have to do what we can to reduce our um, carbon footprint in our world. I mean, the bottles we're drinking out of are recyclable now, and, and they're biodegradable. And that certainly should be how we produce energy and how we consume energy, whether it's um, from renewables or what have you. It was mentioned, where's the cost? Because we have a major concern right now in Wyandotte County with the cost of the utility. If it's 45% and it's raised to answer your question higher, how will that impact our ratepayer? As was also mentioned, we don't exist in a vacuum. Um, someone had mentioned that the cost of utilities is much lower in one of our surrounding counties. If by increasing um, our ability to have renewable energy to higher than the 45 percent that we have, we continue to be at the higher rate for household and for commercial use, um, I would be concerned about that because I want our rates to be more competitive than they are. As concerned as I am about um, reducing our carbon footprint and being innovative, I want us to have um, a better quality of life and better rates for um, the consumers here you know, in Wyandotte County through our PPU. Thank you. We will now turn to closing remarks. We've had a late arrival with Jaquita Coggs, so we will start with you. You have one minute for closing remarks. Thank you. My name is Chiquita Coggs. I was told that this uh, Candidates forum started at 7 o'clock, so I'm here, and I'm sorry that I'm late, but nonetheless, here I am. I am hoping for your, your vote uh, this, this year for the at-large position that I'm, that I'm seeking for position three. I believe that there are a lot of positive things currently with our Board of Public Utilities, and I am very proud of the things that we have, the accomplishments that we have that are good. There are a couple of things that, as a citizen of the county, though, that I would be very interested in, in finding out more information and on checking uh, for our ratepayers to make sure that we have affordable rates for our ratepayers and that we are not paying extra fees when it's not necessary and that we're not trying to compete with every other nation around or every other state or every other county or every other city that we can deal with our ratepayers and their ability to pay their utilities so that they are not shut out, off, off of their service for any reason, if that's possible. I would appreciate your considering voting for me. Again, it's Chiquita Coggs, and thank you. David? Thank you all again for attending. Thank you again for sponsoring this. 
My name is David Haley, and I have tried to be very active in and around this community, um, elected, unelected, supporting candidates um, for decades. I love Wyandotte County, and for areas where we are not competitive or for where we're not listened to, for where we don't have a voice, I take it personally. Many people have called on me about the BPU. It is the one remaining issue head and shoulders that I think causes our county to have a level of disdain that we can't take too much of an issue with because it is true. Whatever anyone else tells you, people have problems with the Board of Public Utilities and they go from year to year to year. And so what I have that's different from every other candidate that's here is that when I tell you I'll do something as a candidate, when I get elected, I'm not gonna change. You can check around, check my record. Google me. I'm going to be there and I will be responsive and responsible for bringing the board to be more in touch and in tune with the concerns that this jewel of a municipal utility that we have called the BPU is. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> so I come from a fighting family. My grandfather is a, uh, a Golden Glove champion over on the Missouri side. I've come from a single parent family. I know what it is to struggle. I know what it is like to worry about your bill. I'm here fighting for my community, not just for BPU, but for other issues. And you'll see me out here uh, knocking on doors, asking questions. You see me out here in the news asking, fighting about pools, keeping our community centers to our community. Um, I'm here to get answers and information. I want to be Wyandotte's personal investigator into BPU and educate our community about issues and policies in BPU. I want to do this for not just me, for my neighbors, for my family members, for all of you. Um, and I do. I'm, I'm a fighter. So please, I know on August 6th you have a lot of things to do. Make one more thing. Vote for Faith Rivera on August 6th. Thank you. Melissa? Melissa Arpeza Vale, running for the Board of Public Utilities, member at large. Um, I am a nurse um, from trade, nurse practitioner. I come from the community. I am invested in the community. I, um, as a concerned citizen, decided to run for the Board of Public Utilities. I am an advocate for my patients. Please let me be an advocate for you on the Board of Public Utilities. I Close the loop constantly every day, day in and day out at my day job. Let me do it for you on the board and bring this community back together. Bring transparency and accountability to the board. I think it's going to be a great jewel that we have here, the BPU. Um, let's make it even better for the future with sustainability. Thank you. You are? I, uh, this is my first uh, term and running for the second term, and I, I have been uh, very responsive to all the people that call me. Uh, I have, uh, um, I make a lot of contacts. I make a lot of uh, 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 contacts with people so that they can uh, uh, present their problems, and, and, and I'll try to address their problems. Uh, in fact, I was at a, a person's house today. Uh, he asked me yesterday uh, to look at an issue, and I did. Uh, that is on my time. I don't, uh, I don't get paid for that. Um, a lot of times, there's uh, the answer needs to be a little bit longer and a little more instructive than, than what you get uh, uh, maybe at a board meeting. I am very passionate about the whole community when I make a decision, it, it's always with you and mine. It's never about me or it's never about anybody else. It's about you. I'm Rose Mulvaney Henry. I'm running for BPU at large, position three. Appreciate your vote on August 6th. I've been a utility attorney for 25 years. Our home is here, my business is here. I care about this community, and I actually think putting somebody who has been in our industry for a long time probably can't hurt things. Um, I said a couple weeks back, I've got lots of other things I can do. I'm not in this for me. I'm in this for us. 
because this is our utility. We own it. We ought to make sure it's managed properly. We ought to work collaboratively with the gen general manager who's new. Uh, we ought to make sure that we're doing what we can for the ratepayers of our community. I appreciate your vote. Thank you. Let's give all these candidates a hand.